I first of all like to thank Goswamiji for making these very wonderful arrangements for us to be together in this very holy place. Let us thank Goswamiji by loudly chanting. Our beloved Guru Maharaj, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, declared Radha Damodar Temple to be the center of the spiritual world. Situated in the heart of the Seva Kunj, where Sri Sri Radha Govinda's sweetest, most beautiful pastimes take place eternally. I would like to speak something about the temples we have visited earlier today, briefly, and then speak about the center of the spiritual world, the home of Sri Rupa Goswami and Sri Jeeva Goswami. We first visited Sri Madan Mohan Mandir. <clears throat> Sanatan Goswami was the highest minister of the king of Bengal, Nawab Hussain Shah. He and his brother Rupa Goswami, who was also high minister, and Anupam, their younger brother, they performed such valuable service to the king that the king, although he was Malacha, from the Mohammedan religion, who hated Hindus, he considered Rupan Sanatan Goswami who's to be like his own brothers. He gave them the titles Sakar Malik and Dabir Khas. And he shared his kingdom with them by granting them fabulous wealth. They resided in Ramkeli, <clears throat> near the bank of the river Ganges, on the border be in Bengal, just close to the border of Bihar. Rupan Sanatan Goswami, as the Birkas and Sakar Malik, they had beautiful palaces incredible bathing places, but they were always absorbed in Krishna. They made their gardens into Nava Vrindavan, into a new Vrindavan. And they had a beautiful forest where they grew Kadamba trees and Tamal trees. And they even excavated a Radha Kund and Sham Kund. In this way they were trying to completely absorb themselves in the spirit of Vrindavan. They did not want to take this position as ministers, but they were forced to do so. Because if they didn't, the Vaishnavas would have been persecuted in a very violent and terrible way. <clears throat> they wrote letter after letter after letter to Lord Chaitanya, asking him what to do. And he didn't answer letters. Finally, they received a reply. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wrote, something like, if a woman loves someone other than her own husband, she will serve her husband especially carefully. But in her heart, she will be thinking of that other person. Hare Krishna. Now that's not meant for ladies. But they understood what he meant. That they should perform their duties 
but in their heart of hearts they should always be remembering Sri Radha and Krishna and doing seva for them. When Lord Chaitanya first attempted to go to Vrindavan, <clears throat> he took a very indirect route in which he came to Ramkeli with millions of people following him, performing Sankirtan, filling the entire creation. Can you imagine millions of people in one Sankirtan being led by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Nityananda Prabhu was there, Haridas Thakur was there, all the devotees loudly chanting. What is the use of being 2,000 people as, if, if that's as loud as you can chant? Thank you very much. Whatever we have, we must use in Krishna's service to its, to its capacity. That is Yukta Vairagya, Rupa Goswami has taught. <clears throat> so there, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed beautiful kirtan. And late at night, the Birkas, Sakar, Malik, and Anupam, they well, incognito secretly went to Lord Chaitanya. That meeting place is still at Ramkeli, where there is a tamal tree and a Kadamba tree side by side. There Rupa and Sanatan Goswami expressed their utter humility. To be Rupanuga, which means to follow in the footsteps of Rupa Goswami, is the path of perfection amongst Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Simply to study his very high, elevated literatures is something very wonderful. But prerequisite to understanding any of that, we have to follow in the footsteps of how he approached Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is described by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami that there were four particular associates of Sri Chaitanya who demonstrated essential characteristics that everyone must follow. But they did so to such an extreme that no one can imitate it. Haridas Thakur demonstrated tolerance. He was beaten through 22 marketplaces severely and he was simply praying the whole time for the deliverance of his of the people trying to murder him, praying to Krishna, give them bhakti, forgive them, and constantly chanting the holy name without cessation. Ramananda Rai, he could be with beautiful young ladies, teaching them to dance, and even preparing them for their dance, for the pleasure of Lord Jagannath without even being the slightest materially disturbed in mind. It was as if he was looking and touching pieces of wood. Ramanandarai exhibited the extreme of self-control of the senses. If you imitate him, he will fall to the lowest regions. But we must understand how he had total control of the senses. Damodar Pandit was so simple. He was so simple, so honest, so straightforward, that he would even chastise Lord Chaitanya. Simplicity is one of the most important qualities of a Vaishnava. Simplicity means no duplicity, no hypocrisy. Honesty. 
and Rupa and Sanatana Goswami demonstrated quality of humility. They considered themselves, they, from their heart they were speaking, not just some poetic presentation. From their heart they revealed that they felt to be the most fallen, the most sinful, the most unqualified people in the entire universe. More fallen than Jagai and Madhai. Jagai and Madhai, they said, they may have been addicted to every type of abominable activities, but they never served malechas. We are servants of people like that. That must, makes us lower than Jagai and Madhai. To deliver us is very difficult. For even us, for Rupan Sanatan and Anupam said, for us to even expect your mercy is like a little dwarf to touch the moon. But we have no other hope. Because you are Patita Pavan. You are the deliverer of the most fallen. So please extend your kindness to us. Otherwise we have no hope. We are helpless. Now Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <coughs> is the source of the Paramatma within the heart and he is living in the heart of his devotees. He knows what is our intention. Srila Prabhupada explained in one beautiful purport that the Lord accepts the purpose in which everything is offered to him. The world may see that you're doing something very glamorous in devotional service. And they may bow down and give you all nice, they may even write pranam mantras for you. But the Lord sees what your intention is. What is your purpose? You cannot fool Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya understood the genuine humility of Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. Their humility was so deep that Lord Chaitanya began to weep tears. The Supreme Personality of Godhead was crying. He said, stop speaking in this way. Your humility has melted my heart. He embraced them, lifted them up, and accepted them as his own. They surrender their body, mind, word, and life at the feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu accepted. And he embraced them. And then he placed his lotus feet on top of their heads and gave them the names Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, and Anupam, who was previously Sri Ballabha. It is described that during that meeting, Sri Jiva Goswami was very small boy, the son of Anupam. And he was just a little behind watching his father and uncles in the association of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, seeing the mercy that they were receiving. And his heart was transformed. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he directed Rupa and Sanatan Goswami to resign from their government services and go to Vrindavan. He gave them four specific instructions that he wanted them to achieve to exhibit by their behavior the ideal example of a Vaishnava, 
especially those in the renounced order of life. To extract the essence of all the scriptures, pure devotional service, following in the footsteps of the residents of Vrindavan, and write books to fill the world with Vrindavan Bhakti. Unconditional devotional service. To establish temples and the worship of the deity and to discover and excavate the holy places of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna's pastimes <clears throat> in Brajdham. So Rupa and Sanatana Goswami left everything behind. Sanatana Goswami just brought a large library of books, holy scriptures. Other than that, they really brought nothing. They left a fortune of millions and millions and millions, hundreds of millions, thousands of millions of rupees worth of property without even a concern. In fact, Sri Sanatan Goswami, he had to go to prison for some time. But that was a small price. A small price to have the privilege to renounce everything for the service of the Lord. On the way to Vrindavan, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was returning from his trip to Vrindavan. At the time of the Magh Mela in Prayag, he, was, he visited there <clears throat> to take his holy bath at the confluence of Yamuna Ganga and Saraswati. He was having wonderful temple, I mean wonderful kirtan at Bindu Madhava temple. <clears throat> It was at that time that Rupa Goswami again met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had converted hundreds and thousands of people in a matter of days to Vaishnavas. There was hundreds and thousands of people with their arms raised loudly chanting the Holy Name. It was at that time that Rupa Goswami composed that illustrious prayer, identifying the true mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Namo Mahabhadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gaurat Veshenamaha. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Krishna himself. But in this particular incarnation, he is more merciful, more munificent than any other incarnation. Because he is giving Krishna praying freely for anyone who's just willing to accept it with faith. For ten days, at the Dasasva Meda Ghat, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Sri Rupa Goswami. And sent him to Vrindavan. Then when the Lord arrived in Varanasi, he met Sanatan Goswami, who had just escaped from prison in a very creative way. Sanatan Goswami, when he approached Lord Chaitanya, how he, how he approached with such humility <clears throat> that
that I am so sinful, I am so lowly, I am so fallen. And yet people call me a learned scholar. And I am so bad that I believe them. I have no hope. I fall at your feet and beg you, please instruct me. <clears throat> Who am I? Where am I coming from? Why am I suffering the threefold miseries of material existence? Who is God? What is my relationship? Lord Chaitanya was so moved by the humility of Sanatana Goswami. Tadvidi pranipatina pari prashnena sevaya upadikshanti te gyanam gyani nastatvatarashana. If you want to be receptive to the message of Guru, first we must submit ourselves. Following in the footsteps of Sanatan Goswami, who happened to be one of the greatest scholars in all of creation of the, whole, of the Holy Scriptures. But he did not present himself. He presented himself as totally ignorant. In that state, you can, your heart is a fertile field for knowledge to actually be assimilated, absorbed. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Sanatan Goswami, you are fit to be my guru, you are so learned and so advanced. But just for the sake of strictness you are speaking like this. But since you have asked, I will explain. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Sanatan Goswami for two months on the bank of the river Ganges in Varanasi and then sent him to Vrindavan. As Sanatan was going one way, Rupa Goswami was coming back the other way. As actually, Rupa Goswami stopped in Bengal for the purpose of settling all of his family affairs once and for all. But while he was in Bengal, his younger brother Anupam left the world. He went back home, back to Godhead. Rupa Goswami met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri, where he stayed with him for many months. <clears throat> At that time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <clears throat> revealed to the whole world the greatness of Rupa Goswami and his intimacy with the Lord. There is that famous incident where Rupa Goswami saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing before the chariot of Jagannath. And Lord Chaitanya in the Mahabhav, the ecstatic love of Srimati Radharani, was offering beautiful prayer. The prayer that Radharani spoke when she met Lord Sri Krishna after a long, long time in Kurukshetra. But nobody could understand what Lord Chaitanya was saying because it was in a special type of language that seemed like just a romantic, ordinary romantic expression. <coughs> Rupa Goswami on a palm leaf while he was living at the Siddha Bakula the Bhajan Kutir of Haridas Thakur, he wrote a verse which was a, like his commentary of Lord Chaitanya's verse. I am the same Radha and you are the same Krishna and we are meeting in the same moonlight night. But I long, I long to see you with a peacock feather in your hair on the banks of the river Yamuna under the Kadamba trees. <coughs> For Srimati Radharani, the gopis, to see Krishna as a royal, royal prince, Hare Krishna. It was heartbreaking for them. They wanted to see him as a cowherd boy. 
in his Madhurya Roop, not his Aishwarya Roop. He wrote this beautiful prayer and put it in the roof of the thatched hut of Haridas, Thakur, and then went to the sea to take bath. At that time Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya came and he happened to see no one was home but he read the palm leaf. He was astonished. He brought that palm leaf with him and showed it to Swarup Damodar Goswami and said, how is it possible that Rupa Goswami has perfectly understood the innermost feelings of my heart? And Swarup Damodar Goswami replied, it is only possible because you have bestowed your full causeless mercy upon him. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Yes, I have. Lord Chaitanya told all the assembled devotees the same thing. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu once came to Haridas Thakur's Bhajan Kutir and he saw this beautiful prayer that Rupa Goswami had composed, glorifying the holy name. I do not know how much nectar the two syllables Krishna have produced. <clears throat> when the holy name of Krishna dances upon my tongue, I desire many, many, many tongues. When it enters into the holes of my ears, I desire millions and millions of ears. And when it enters into the courtyard of my heart, my heart, my mind, my senses, everything is conquered. Mahaprabhu was so very pleased. Haribo. It's just trying to find its mother. We should feel separation from Krishna as that little monkey is feeling separation from mother. Hari Hari. In an assembly of devotees, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had Rupa Goswami read his writings, Ramananda Rai, Sarva Boma Bhattacharya, Nityananda Prabhu, Haridas Thakur, all these very, very great devotees. And they all unanimously agreed that no one is more qualified than Srila Rupa Goswami to present the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the world. They were astonished. Ramananda Rai said, this is not poetry, this is showers and showers and showers of ambrosial nectar. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, yes. When I met him at Prayag, I understood his humility, his sincerity, and his devotion. And therefore, I placed the love of my heart within his heart. And, and, I have, and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu empowered Rupa and Sanatana Goswami to establish the principles of his mission for the whole world. And thus they live together here in Vrindavan. Meanwhile, little Jiva Goswami, he was living at home with his mother, but he had deities of Krishna Balaram, and they were his constant companions. Even when he was a very small, small child, he wouldn't play cricket, <laughs> like almost every other boy in India. He would just do puja for his deities. He would spend the day collecting flowers and offering, making garlands and offering nice worship and collecting some food stuff and making offerings. He would sing for the deities of Krishna Balaram. He would dance for the deities. He would embrace the deities 24 hours a day. He went to sleep embracing his deities of Krishna and Balaram as a little boy. He couldn't give up their association. 
They were his love, his friends, his everything. And one day, Lord Krishna manifested the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his deity of Balaram became Nityananda Prabhu. And they blessed him supremely. And then he understood, not just theoretical, but with complete confidence, what Narottam Das Thakur has prayed. Prajendra Nandana J. Sachi Sutta Hailo Se Balarama Hailo Nithai. That the, the son of Sri Nanda Maharaj has appeared as the son of Sachi and Balaram has come as Nithai. From that day on, he was in ecstatic love. He would weep and he would cry. He longed and longed and longed to follow in the footsteps of his father and uncles and go to Vrindavan. That is how he spent his life. At the same time, he became a profound scholar of all subjects, especially the scriptures. When he was a very young man, he left his home and went to Navadweep. And there he met Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu personally took him on Parikrama of all the nine islands of Navadweep and explained confidentially Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's leelas and the history of those places. In fact, by the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu in several places, Jiva Goswami was allowed to actually see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all of his devotees performing Harinam Sankirtan in the holy places. Sri Nityananda Prabhu instructed Jiva Goswami that Lord Chaitanya has given Vrindavan to your family. You should go there and assist your uncles, Sri Rupa Goswami and Sri Sanatana Goswami, in the mission of Mahaprabhu. But first, go to Varanasi and gain further study of the scriptures from a very great scholar, disciple of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, of the name Madhusudan Bachaspati. Ah. So Jiva Goswami went to Varanasi and studied under this great saint. And soon his incredible intellect, humility, and deep oceanic devotion brought great fame to his name. Even he was young. He was considered to be the greatest scholar on earth. And after completing his studies, he came here to Vrindavan, where he fell at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami. The eldest of his uncles, Sanatana Goswami, he asked him for initiation. Sanatana Goswami, in his humility, instructed Rupa Goswami to initiate him, which he did. Sanatana Goswami was traveling to various places. It is described that Adwaita Charya, the avatar of Mahavishnu and Sadashiva, he was living in Vrindavan for some time. Did you all see that banyan tree on the way here? It is called Adwaita Bhat. We passed right by it. Sachi Sutta Prabhu was telling everyone about it because he has, by nature, a very loud voice. We try to dovetail his propensity. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it was at that place that Advaita Prabhu was performing his bhajan. 
and one of the original deities of Vrindavan, Madan Gopal, appeared to him there. <coughs> Krishna's great grandson, Bhadranab, was coronated as the king of Mathura by Maharaj Yudhisthira at the time when he made Parikshit Maharaj the king of Hastinapur, which was the capital of the world. So Vajranab was requested by the great devotees to re restore the glory of Vrindavan so that people could come and understand and benefit from Krishna's presence. So he uncovered many, many holy places here and also had carved deities. Vishwakarma personally carved some of these deities. And three of them we will speak of today. Madan Mohan, Govinda Dev, and Gopinath. These three deities are supremely worshipped by Gaudiya Vaishnavas. <laughs> Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami explains so nicely that Lord Chaitanya told that there are really all the Vedic literatures are discussing three topics in essence. Sambandha establishing our relationship with Krishna. How is it that we have lost our relationship with Krishna? We are all his eternal servants, his parts and parcels. We can never be separate from Krishna. But we have forgotten. Separation from Krishna really means forgetfulness of Krishna in the sense of a conditioned soul. And why are we forgetting Krishna? Because madana, the force of material energy, this madana is one of the most influential people that have ever lived. He keeps the entire creation spellbound by the illusion that I am this body. What is in relationship to this body is mine and I am the enjoyer. I am trying to be, as far as I can, the controller. Krishna is the supreme controller. He's the only enjoyer. We are all his eternal servants. We are all meant to be enjoyed by him. That is our eternal nature. But it is this madana that pulls, puts us in this crazy, insane spell of illusion that I am the enjoyer. Have any of you ever had that impulse? Since time immemorial. And it's so hard to escape that prison of Cupid's clutches. Therefore, we approach the Supreme Lord and establish ourselves that I am not this body. Nothing is mine. I am the eternal servant of Krishna. And we begin the path of bhakti to actually act according to our real nature by engaging in the nine processes of devotional service, beginning with hearing about the Lord and chanting His holy names. <laughs> Are you all suffering in the sunshine? How many of you are suffering in the sunshine? There's a couple honest people I see. Thank you. Anyways, Krishna's more effulgent than millions and millions of suns. And any situation in Vrindavan is a benediction. When we were at Radha Sham Sundar Temple, I was going to give a lecture there when everybody assembled. So I asked Radha Krishna Prabhu, Abhiram Prabhu, who are 
coordinators of the managerial side of this yatra. And they, they have this whole system of walkie-talkies and cellular phones. I don't know what they do. For me, it's all some sort of mystic city, these things. <laughs> and they're talking, and we're in Shamsundar Temple. There's probably four or five hundred people in Shamsundar Temple. And they told me that the unbroken line coming to Shamsundar Temple there were still devotees in line walking up the steps of Madan Mohan at the back of the line and in the front of the line they were having kirtan in Radha Shamsundar temple. So I'm very sorry some of you have to stand in lines like this. But take it in this way that to be standing in line to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his eternal abode of Vrindavan is not an inconvenience. Huh? Considering it's taken you millions and millions and millions of births to see the face of the Lord in his holy abode. Standing in line for a few minutes. We should be grateful. And we're standing in line in Vrindavan, breathing the air of Vrindavan, being purified by the dust of Vrindavan, hearing the holy names, and we're standing in line with devotees. It's not like at a railway station. <laughs> we're actually behind the devotees. Thousand, thousands of devotees are in front of us. And we're, wait, and we're actually patiently waiting for all of them to offer their prayers and darshan at the Supreme Personality of Godhead, chanting the holy names in the holy land of Vrindavan under a cup of briksha trees. What a tremendous benediction. Hopefully that will give you some solace next time, next time we stand in line. <laughs> but it is reality. Life is our consciousness. Emerson said, the mind is such a thing, it could make hell into heaven or heaven into hell. A devotee whose mind is Krishna conscious makes every situation into the spiritual world by seeing the positive opportunity to purify ourselves, to enrich our devotional service, and to remember Krishna. Uh, so Sanatana Goswami, or I'm sorry, Adwaitacharya, he discovered the deity of Madan Gopal who is the Sambandha Murti of our Sampradaya. We worship Madan Mohan to re-establish our eternal relationship with Krishna and act according to that relationship. And Lord Chaitanya said, the second subject of the Vedas is Abhideya. Abhideya means to positively, actively engage in the processes of devotional service with very deep attachment. The worshipable deity of Abhideya is Sri Govinda Dev. Madan Mohan is he who attracts even the mind of Cupid. By hearing about, by worshipping, by chanting the holy names, and by serving Sri Madan Mohan, he will steal our hearts away from the confines and captivity of the prison of Durga, Cupid, material nature. And Govinda means one who gives pleasure to the cows, the land, and the senses. The path of bhakti is so glorious. 
with the same very senses that we have now, our eyes, our nose, our ears, our tongue, our sense of touch. We can become perfect by just utilize them under the instructions of Guru and Krishna in devotional service, by hearing about Krishna, by tasting his prasad, by speaking and chanting his names and glories, by using our limbs to perform devotional service, by smelling the tulsi leaves and the flowers and the scents that are offered to the Lord. By engaging ourselves with great endeavor and enthusiasm, we become supremely purified. And gradually then we can worship the Prayojana Murti, the ultimate perfection of life, Sri Gopinath. Gopinath is the Lord of Gopis. Through the path of Bhakti, purification and spiritual development by the mercy of Sri Radharani and the Vaishnavas, we can follow in the footsteps of the gopis of Vrindavan and enter into the eternal pastimes of Radha Shamsundar. So Sanatana Goswami, how he found Madan Gopal is a very wonderful story. It is explained that Advaita Charya worshipped Madan Gopal and when he left, he turned it over to one Brahmin in Mathura named Purushottam Chobe. And he worshipped Madan Gopal. He had such ecstatic love that he worshipped Madan Gopal like his own son. But Madan Gopal told Purushottam Chobe that he wanted him to entrust the care of the deity to Sanatana Goswami. Bhakti Ratnakar explains for some time Sanatana Goswami was living in Mahaban, where we're going tomorrow, in case you are interested to know. <clears throat> One day Sanatana Goswami was roaming along the bank of Yamuna, and he saw some little boys playing. And one of those little boys was so beautiful, so charming in every way. He absolutely just enthralled Sanatan's heart. So Sanatan Goswami couldn't give up his association. Just from a distance, he was just watching this little boy playing. And who was the boy playing with? Just the local Brijabasi children. When they finished their playing in the evening, the boy was returning home. And Sanatana Goswami was following him from some distance away. He followed, followed, followed. The boy went into the boy went into the temple of Madan Mohan. And there was nobody in the temple. Sanatana Goswami went, and there was nobody there except the deity. Then he realized that Madan Mohan was actually taking a human-like form and playing with the Brijabasi children in his eternal abode of Vrindavan. Sanatana Goswami had nothing. When the deity was entrusted to him at Dwadasaditya Til, where he was living, we went there this morning, he didn't have a house. He was living under a different tree every night. He was doing madhukari, begging. So when Madan Gopal came to him, he was worshipping him under a tree with great love and devotion, just begging for some very coarse wheat flour and rolling him in balls with some water from Yamuna and putting it in fire and offering that. And there is a famous story where Madan Mohan says, Dear Sanatan, can you give me little salt with these roti? Sanatan said, I'm giving you everything I have. 
But at that time there was a merchant, Krishnadas Kapoor, who was traveling from the northern provinces of India to Agra with all of his wealth, um, all of his goods he was going to sell in Agra and make lots of wealth. And his boat got stuck in the mud, right, Yamuna? Actually, when we were crossing Keshigat, we had this little boy who was rowing boat, and he got stuck in mud. So I was thinking, this is very auspicious. So he was helpless. Boat is stuck in mud. And he's in the middle of this wilderness, in the middle of a forest. At that time, there were no temples here. Vrindavan was just a dense forest. There were lions and tigers and the six Goswamis. So little Madan, Madan Mohan took the form of a little boy and instructed this desperate merchant, go up on top of the hill, there's a good sadhu up there. So he met Sanatana Goswami and there are four types of people that approach Krishna. <laughs> One is distress. He was in too much distress. His entire life's earning was on a boat and it was stuck in the middle of a jungle. Ah. Very serious situation. But Sanatana Goswami taught him the principles of pure devotional service and taught him how to love Madan Mohan with his heart. He became a devotee. That is the power of the association of such a Vaishnav, Sanatan Goswami. What a fortune! His boat was freed, and by that time, he was a devotee who owed everything to Sanatan Goswami. He sold everything he had, he came back and offered it all to Sanatan Goswami. Sanatan Goswami, he had thousands of times more than this and he gave it up. What does he want this stuff for? He said, if you want to do something, I'm going to continue living under trees and doing madhukari, whatever. But Madan Mohan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wants him to live in a beautiful temple. So build temple for him, please. So that is how Madan Mohan Temple was built. It was the first major temple built in Vrindavan. And even today, all over the world, it is a symbol of Vrindavan. The Sambandha Murti. And it is most proper to begin Yatra by first submitting our hearts and our lives at the lotus feet of Sri Madan Mohan. Rupa Goswami, we will discuss this evening before we go to Sri Radha Govinda Dev Temple. But I'd like to tell one story. He was living here on this side is Sri Rupa Goswami's Bhajan Kutir and on this side is Sri Rupa Goswami's Samadhi Mandir. Rupa Goswami would perform his bhajan here in the heart of the Seva Kunj in Vrindavan forest. Sri Rupa Goswami wrote so many of his divine literatures here. He would speak from the Srimad Bhagavatam here. The Goswamis would come, all of them, Sri Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Bhat Goswami, Gopal Bhat Goswami, Jiva Goswami, they would meet here in this very courtyard where we are sitting today and in ecstatic love discuss the teachings and pastimes of Lord Sh of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They would take prasad here together 
in this very courtyard, the six Goswamis would have Prem Sankirtan chanting the holy names. Jiva Goswami took initiation here from Rupa Goswami. But Rupa Goswami, before giving him initiation, engaged him in very simple menial service. For one year, Jiva Goswami, who was already having studied under Madhusudan Vachaspati. He had such an immense reputation as a great, great scholar. But Rupa Goswami had him doing very simple seva. Jiva Goswami would go out and collect leaves and prepare them to be the paper, or not paper, but to be the place where Rupa Goswami would write the text of his books. He would wash the utensils of Rupa Goswami. He would massage the feet and the legs of his Gurudev. He would go out and pick flowers for Rupa Goswami to assist him in his puja. Menial service. And how grateful he was. Yes, if we want to follow in the footsteps of the six Goswamis, we should understand this principle. However big we are, however great we are, however learned we are, however advanced we are, we should never see ourselves as anything more than the most menial, humble servant of the servant of the servant of the servant. That is Vaishnav. And that is the consciousness that attracts the mercy of Sri Radha. Damodar. Rupa Goswami initiated, I mean, he initiated him and tested him in various ways. When that one Digvijay Pandit came to Vrindavan, he was having all, this, all the Goswamis sign a statement that, he was, that they were defeated by him. He challenged Rupa and Sanatan to debate. Rupa and Sanatan said, why should we debate you? You are more qualified than us. You will defeat us. It's a waste of time to even try to debate you. Oh, you believe that? Yes. Then sign. They signed. That was the humility of Rupa and Sanatan. They didn't care about worldly reputation. <clears throat> For them it was just a material waste of time. But when he showed Jiva Goswami, J Rupa Goswami sign, Jiva Goswami said, I will debate with you. And it took about seven days or more, and he defeated him. Only for the purpose of protecting the integrity of Rupa and Sanatan's reputation in the world. Rupa Goswami knew that, but he wanted to show the world the greatness of Rupa, Jiva Goswami. Because the six Goswamis were sent to Lord Chaitanya with the special commission to show the world what is the characteristics of a Vaishnava. And there's a very important characteristic here. Although Jiva Goswami was absolutely correct in what he did, Rupa Goswami said that you have debated this person because you have false pride. Hare Krishna. And Vrindavan is a place where no one could live who even has a single speck of pride in their heart. Therefore, you must leave Vrindavan. Jiva Goswami accepted. I'm so proud. I'm so sinful. My Gurudev is trying to help me. And he left. And went to a lonely place and performed severe austerities to atone for his false pride. 
And ultimately Sanatran Goswami found him and brought him back and Rupa Goswami personally nursed him back to health. But in the process showed how great a Vaishnava is. Doesn't argue with Guru, but accepts a lowly, humble position. Rupa Goswami loved Jiva Goswami so dearly. With his own hands, Rupa Goswami carved a deity and named that deity Radha Damodar. In the year 1542, Rupa Goswami installed that deity personally and worshipped him and then entrusted the care of Sri Radha Damodar to Jiva Goswami. Sri Jiva Goswami worshipped Radha Damodar with such deep love and attachment. The Bhakti Ratnakar explains a few incidences of the nature of Jiva Goswami's love. Should I continue? Damodar was so pleased with Jiva Goswami's devotion. He would speak, he would speak to Jiva Goswami. He would say, please give me boga, I'm hungry. Now for us, we understand the time when the boga is supposed to be offered. And we do it by the clock, knowing that Krishna is expecting it. But for Jiva Goswami, because of his love, Damodar, when it was coming close to the time, he would actually tell. I guess there wasn't clocks in those days. <laughs> but they would understand quite precisely when offerings to be made. But Damodar would say, I'm hungry, Jiva, I'm hungry, please feed me bhoga. And he would personally prepare the bhoga and offer it with his own hands, with love and devotion, and by Damodar's mercy, Jiva Goswami, with his own eyes, would see Damodar eating the boga. One time, Jiva Goswami heard a flute playing. And then Damodar called him and said, Jiva, come, I'm playing the flute for you. And Jiva Goswami came to the altar and there he saw Damodar dancing, the deity of Damodar dancing, his threefold bending form playing upon his flute. Beautiful, sweet music for the pleasure of his devotee. When Jiva Goswami saw the beautiful form of Damodar, whose eyes were like lotus flowers, playing sweet, sweet melodies on the flute, his head decorated with peacock feather, beautiful forest flowers around his neck and lovely ornaments, dancing and singing and playing his flute for his devotee. Jiva Goswami fell unconscious in ecstasy. And when he came back to consciousness, he could only weep, cry in ecstatic love. These are some of the pastimes that Sri Jiva Goswami performed with Sri Damodar, who was worshipped here. <clears throat> the six Goswamis of Vrindavan are eternally performing their bhajan and their puja and their pastimes here in the courtyard of Radha Damodar temple. Shri Shri Radha Gopinath are eternally performing their sweet Rasa Lila in the courtyard of Radha Damodar Temple. Thus Srila Prabhupada said, it is the center of the spiritual world. When Rupa Goswami disappeared from this world, 
which was a heartbreaking sad event for all the Goswamis of Vrindavan. Jiva Goswami personally arranged for this place that we are sitting at to be the Samadhi of Sri Rupa Goswami. Jiva Goswami in his life wrote over 25 books, over 100,000 Sanskrit slokas, and they were all based on the teachings of Rupa and Sanatana. Rupa and Goswami through Upadesha Amrita, Bhakti Rasamrita, a Sindhu established, established not only the essence of the Siddhanta of Lord Chaitanya's teachings, but also the way, the practical way in which we can follow and achieve ultimate perfection. Jiva Goswami established an incredible library of all the Goswami's literatures. And later on, right here in this courtyard, Narottam Das Thakur, Srinivasacharya, and Shamanan Prabhu, they all st studied under Jiva Goswami. Such holy place. His Divine Grace, Sesi Bhakti Bidan Swami Prabhupada, He renounced his family life to become Vanaprastha and came to Vrindavan. First he was living at Bamsi Gopal Temple near Yamuna, close to Keshigat. In 1959, his long cherished desire was fulfilled to have his residence at the Radha Damodar Temple. Where we are sitting, these two windows were the kitchen of Srila Prabhupada. And just across a little courtyard of only a few steps, Srila Prabhupada's Bhajan Kutir. Srila Prabhupada lived in these rooms for six years. His Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, instructed him at his first meeting at Ultadonga Junction Road in Calcutta that you are a young man, intelligent, take the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and spread it throughout the world in the English language. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur saw the heart and the eternal relationship he had with Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada came to Vrindavan not like most people. Although he was of old age, he didn't come here to retire. He came here to prepare himself for his life's mission. In Vrindavan, he lived a very simple life. The Goswamis here they witness Prabhupada's simplicity and devotion. He was writing back to Godhead. And although Vrindavan is his eternal home, he would have to take train all the way to Delhi on a regular basis to get the back to Godhead printed. And then he would go into the streets of Delhi with his own hands and distribute them and then come back. But some devotees told him that if you really want to establish very strongly, you should publish books. And that reminded him of what Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur ordered him at Radha Kund. Print books. Distribute books. It was in these rooms Sri Radha Damodar, 
that Śrīla Prabhupāda wrote the translations and Bhaktivedanta purports to the three volumes of the first canto of Śrīmad Bhāgavatam. And Prabhupāda told us that his purports were his spiritual ecstasies that he's sharing with the world. Śrīla Prabhupāda daily would offer his obeisances, his prayers, and his very life at the samādhi of Rūpa Goswāmī, who is our sampradāya Acharya, and prayed, prayed, and prayed for his mercy. In 1965, Prabhupada had completed the first canto of Bhagavatam and it was published. And he told some devotees that Sri Rupa Goswami, in his bhajan kutir, Rupa Goswami appeared to him and gave him his blessings to go to the West to spread his message. The time that Srila Prabhupada lived here, such a simple life, immersed in prayer at the feet of Rupa Goswami, Jiva Goswami, and his Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's Pushpa Samadhi is also behind in the courtyard. It was so deep and so intimate that even when he was in the West, he was sending whatever he had to maintain these rooms. And he told the devotees, no matter what, please keep these rooms. And Prabhupada said, I am eternally living in my rooms at Radha Damodar Temple. In 1965, Śrīla Prabhupāda left 40 rupees and a box of books. Left Vrindavan, got a ticket in Bombay with tremendous trouble. Took the blessings of the Goswamis and all the deities of Vrindavan. And then to his samadhi of his Guru Maharaj in Sri Mayapur Dham and from Calcutta went to the West. And there's a beautiful prayer that Prabhupada writes in his diary. Not actually a prayer. He's, when Prabhupada wrote in his diary, he wasn't writing for anyone except Krishna. He had no followers. He had nothing except love and compassion. In the Arabian Sea, after his heart attacks, he wrote beautiful entry where he expressed how deeply he was feeling separation from Sri Vrindavan Dham. Vrindavan was his home. He said, here I am in the middle of the sea, so very, very far away from Vrindavan Dham where I am feeling such deep separation from Radha Damodar, Radha Madan Mohan, Radha Govinda, Radha Gopinath. But it is the order of my Guru Maharaj. So I am happy to do so. So yes, all devotees, who are descendants of Śrīla Prabhupāda's mercy. For us, the Radha Damodar Temple is a most exalted and holy place where we can offer our gratitude in our lives at the lotus feet of Śrīla Prabhupāda. Prabhupāda so deeply wanted to bring devotees to Vrindavan. Even when he was in New York, and there was one 
semi-crazy person who started to take interest in Krishna consciousness. He wrote to his god brothers that this boy is, is taking interest. I want to send him to Vrindavan where, he wrote, where, where all of you can train him in Vrindavan. By inconceivable mercy of Sri Radha Damodar, Sri Gornitai, Prabhupada was empowered to do what no Acharya had ever done. Take the message of Lord Chaitanya and spread it throughout the world. Practically every continent. Not just giving a lecture and getting an applause and your name in a paper, like some Indian sadhus who went and become very famous. He actually went right into the ghettos of the most degraded city of New York and transformed people's hearts. And then traveled around the planet 13 times, making tens and thousands of people's devotees. Tens and millions of books revealing the glories of Rupa Goswami's teachings have been circulated and distributed. And the seed of that glorious tree of, Sh of Srila Prabhupada's life is right in these rooms and right in this courtyard of Radha Damodar Temple. In 1972, actually, I was speaking, even in 65, Prabhupada was dreaming of bringing people from the West to Vrindavan. By 1972, his movement was quite well established. There wasn't that many devotees, but it was established. And at that time, Prabhupada invited his disciples from all parts of the world to come to Vrindavan. for one month, the month of Kartik. This was such a deep fulfillment of his inner heart's desires. To sit right here where we are sitting today, in the courtyard of Radha Damodar, between the Bhajan Kutir and Samadhi of Rupa Goswami, Srila Prabhupada spoke for one month in the mornings and evenings on the nectar of devotion, Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, to devotees from all over the world. How, what a loving, intimate offering that was to Rupa Goswami and his Gurudev. And Srila Prabhupada praised the good fortune of all of these devotees that they had come to Vrindavan to hear Rupa Goswami's teachings at in the very center of the spiritual world. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here in the temple of Sri Rupa Goswami, Jiva Goswami, Srila Prabhupada, the temple of Radha Damodar, we offer our sincere and deep prayers. that we can truly follow in the footprints of Sri Rupa Goswami by being faithful, dedicated follower of Srila Prabhupada, praying to be the dust at the feet of the servants of Srila Prabhupada, praying for the taste to chant the holy names, to hear the glories of the Lord and to serve the Vaishnavas because that taste will wash away all mundane attractions and water the seed of pure unallied bhakti. Let this be our prayer. Prayer of gratitude to Srila Prabhupada 
for so perfectly and beautifully representing the mercy of all the previous acharyas and showering us with that blessing. On this side of the courtyard is the Samadhi Mandir of Bhugarbha Goswami. Bhugarbha Goswami, disciple of Gadadhar Pandit, of the Panchatattva. He came to Vrindavan and was very, very dear, intimate friend of Lokanath Goswami. And they wandered through the twelve forests together and performed very, very loving devotional service to Radha Govinda. Also, Samadhi Mandir of Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur are here in this facility. We also went this morning to Radha Sham Sundar Temple, but we'll discuss that later today, hopefully. But at this time, I think we should end. I wish to thank you all very, very, very much. Let us offer this prayer very loudly. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayan Rupa Pradama Yam Dadati Svapadam Dikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Deve Gaudavani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pascha Jadeshatari Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna